Hey everybody, today I want to talk about DizTech. Um, so I'm in the process of learning DizTech. I would say I'm slightly between beginner and intermediate when it comes to DizTech. So there's probably going to be some mistakes or some stuff that I don't know. Uh, so if y'all want to correct me on it, that's fine. I'll leave a post in the in the comments. I'm still learning it myself. So today I got a VAV controller here, an ECB VAV, right? So it's Bagnet MSTP. Um, I have that hooked up to my DizTech Jace. And let's just go over some stuff. So I got um, four binary outputs on this controller, two analog outputs or universals, and then four uh, universal inputs. But then when I went to documentation, just to be honest with you, I found this. And it says 12 points. So I was like, oh, they must make a bigger version of this. But no, the 12 points, they actually count the uh, damper actuator and the flow sensor as a point, I believe. Again, comment if, if I'm wrong here. But they even specify four universal inputs, four DOs, two universal outputs. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So they have to be counting something else for that to happen. But no worries. I mean, overall, it's a decent controller, decent size. So you can go look up the specs yourself. But here we go. Uh, baud rates, it can go all the way down to 9600, all the way up to 7600. Um, dip switching... I don't really like you do you have to take the cover off to address it you got uh, binary addressing up here which is fine but you do have to remove the cover to address it and if you're like me that has um, the mind of a goldfish that forgets all the time you forget to address it and you go install it in a VAV and then you have this damper sticking out right here, and sometimes it's hard to get the cover off. So um, I don't like that you have to take the cover off to address it, but I can get over it. Uh, the cost of these things are a lot cheaper than alternatives, so you know you can work with a lot here. Um, communications RS forty five. Like I said, I do these do come in IP varieties um, as well, just a different part number. Da, 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 da. Uh, you can have, if you do the Cat5 sensors, the lower sensors, uh, you can have up to four of those guys on there. Um, up to two of these lighting controllers and two of these blind controllers if you're going to do that. And that's going to all hang off of the subnet port right here on the side, which is Cat5. Okay. I have used the wireless version of this, and it's a, like a two-piece part, part um, wireless where um, your transmitter receiver um, plugs in here on the side and it says wireless port, and you stick your sensor out there in the field, and it, it works. I mean, it's it's got range limitations just like every other wireless system, but uh, overall it, it connected fine. They use uh, like an in-ocean wireless standard. So if you know anything about those in-ocean stuff, I use those a lot with the uh, Schneider controls. So um, they work pretty good. It's a one-to-one -one, uh, wireless option or any-to-one maybe possibly on here. But it um, overall, where I used it, it worked pretty good. It could do your standard uh, 0 to 10, 0 to five um zero to um 20 four to 20 milliamp basically but you do have to put a resistor in line and parallel with it on the four to 20 signal on the input side just just so you know uh, it does not you can't hook it up directly four to 20 you do have to put that re resistor in there we learned that the other day um pulse width modulation that's pretty cool um, and floating and that's it now uh, the DOs will actually output 24 volts hot on the VAVs uh, whenever you get into the unitary controllers 
that's where you got the 12 volts DC. So you need to put a relay in there, 12 volts DC, if you're looking for 24 volts. Now let's look how to program this guy. So I set up a basically a new station on the Jace right now. And I can go and discover this guy. It's not going to do me too much good because i got to show you. you got to load some distribution files in here to be able to, to do anything with this guy through the Jace. So here's my ECB. I'm going to turn that false. I'm just going to leave the name the same. Now normally I could come over here and right click and at the top here it would be launch the wizard. But I don't have, since I recently commissioned this Jace, I don't have the distribution files in there to launch the wizard. So I thought, let's share it with everybody else. So you have to go up here to the platform of the Jace. So you do have to know the platform credentials if you're going to do this. Um, go to distribution file installer. Log in here. And it's going to go and look for the distribution files on your computer. Okay. Uh, we want to pick one of these. If this doesn't come up, if it comes up like the clean disk over here with just the Niagara stuff, you're going to come down here to choose directory and go down to the disk tech control files. I already did this once, so that's why it popped up with it and you want to pick one of these two up here the boss eight um, um the 8000 jace which i'm using now is called the boss eight the 9000 is called the boss nine obviously i'm not using the boss nine i'm using the boss eight so i'm just going to pick the bigger version of this i guess let's see 413 242 240 so this one wins install that should be the latest version and that's going to load the distribution files on here where i can use the launcher to get into the uh, configuration tool of this programming tool so it's really 100 percent customizable programming with some templates uh, built in so i do like that i do like the the how it's modular uh, a lot of the programming so you can kind of take out what you like and reuse it over and over again so there we go we can close window and we'll wait for that uh, jace to start back up and then we'll continue all right it's been some time let's see if the platform platform should be going station might still be starting up Okay, application, we're still starting. I'm sure just disregard all these errors that are gonna pop up. There's a there's a lot in this station that's not running or not connected. So we'll get a lot of errors here. I'll actually wait until this station starts running and re resume the video then. Alright, that didn't take too long. Got their station running. So now we can jump in and see if we have our launcher. So, clicked. Come on. There we go. All right, station, config, drivers, magnet. All right. And of course, no launcher. You know what? Let me see. This might have all been my fault at the beginning. So when you do a discovery and bring in the controller, we want to bring it in as... Not a bagnet device, but a BCP bagnet device. That was probably my fault. But now you got to see how to do the distribution files. So now, as you see, when I right click on it, I can launch the wizard. 
So launching the wizard opens up the software portion where I can configure slash program the controller. There we go. It's over here. Come on. You know you want to open? There you go. So here is the controller. So since I haven't loaded programming on this controller on this Jace, it doesn't have anything in there. The VAVs don't keep um, the programming inside where you can extract it from the VAV. Now the Jace will remember it and have all the, the programming in there. But since I haven't downloaded anything with this Jace, with this controller, it's not in there. So I have to go to my code library here. I don't have to, but that's what I want to do. And I'll go to applications and I'll work my way down. This is a BACnet VAV. And I can do these preloaded applications here. And I'll just choose, this is the typical application for the United States. Um, this would be the typical for anywhere else. This would be everything in metric. And this is um, Imperial. So I'm going to choose this and drag that over. I don't want to save the current project. And what that does is it allows me to configure this controller. So I don't have a space temp hooked up to it, obviously here. But I can go through here and configure where's my space temp. Now, this is a, a little tricky here. So you see on UI1, UI1 can be space temp, awk detect, or window contact. Okay, those are our options. And on two, we get set point offset, if that's what we want. And on three, we can get fan status. So three is the first one we can get fan status on. And then four is CO2. We can't have any CO2 here. So you're, you, you have to know where you can put things. Let's say that. All right. And same thing with your fan. If you were to do a fan command, it's always going to be on output 4. It's not going to be on 1. So just, just a heads up on there. Um, so you could set up your heat. If you have digital heat, single stage would be this. Uh, box type, if you did have a fan, you would come down here and hit fan. This is where you set up um, clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. This is to open. Uh, VVT mode. So you can do that if you don't have airflow. Set up all your, your set points here. And then when you get done, here's your outputs. And see, you don't change these. When you get done, you go up to tools. No, not there. You go up to tools and you do a synchronize. You download the device and it will download everything, all the configurations that you just did. Now, you're like, well, that doesn't sound custom program to me. Uh, that's just using the that standard application. And after this finishes downloading, I'll show you how to get into some of the custom stuff behind the scenes. Finish. Okay. So you could come up here to home again. You could switch over to the uh, GFX program that kind of gets you out of this configuration. Here's where all the programming lives. Here was that configuration assistance. So everything's kind of set up in here for you, but you can change some stuff. Now, if you go and change stuff in here, just know that this, this configuration setting is not going to work properly. Okay. So remember that. But comm sensor, so if you had one of those smart sensors, that's what this is for. Um, 
configuration. You can go through all this stuff and figure out what you want. Now, if you're using one of their standard applications here, you get these warnings. Uh, don't use any of the inputs or outputs outside of the configurations to do anything with. And I this has bit me on a job here recently, so uh, do take warning of that. But you can go through here and look at some of the stuff. And what's really cool, like if you really like this, uh, say you want to reuse this, you're like, oh, I, I really like heating and cooling terminal load calculations. You can go and kind of highlight all this and select it. Open up your library over here and do my custom applications and drag this over. Nope, just can right click on it and copy. Save code snippet. That's what I meant right there. Save it to my applications and just copy what it is. Heat slash cool. Load calculation. Boom. And now it'll actually show up over here and you can reuse it later in any programming. It'll always be over here. You just drag it and drop it onto a, a sheet. Uh, so if I were to add a programming sheet here, add that over and boom. See? Done. So think of that as a, a new programming. So I do like that portion of it. So you can go through the standards and take out what you like. Uh, discharge air temperature control. Like you can, we know we can use this in some air handler programming and some other stuff, some CO2 calculations. Take out what the modular pieces that you need and throw it over here in your code library. And then you can build stuff from scratch. And then you don't have to really worry about um, this over here where you're going to can't use your inputs and outputs the way that you want them to use. So that's, that, that's kind of a nice thing there to do. Now, just know that now the airflow... Um, balancing tool won't work with it um i read that in their documentation i haven't seen that yet but there is a what what they specify as a balancing tool so if you do your own custom stuff no that will work but overall i i do like it and if this looks similar and if you've been doing johnson for a while well all of johnson lawn stuff is this tech it's just rebranded Johnson. So if you, you've ever dealt with the LN controller or LX controller, that's a DizTech controller, and that's this programming right here. It's just Johnson relabels it under their, their name. Uh, they buy that from DizTech to do that with. But you can build your own custom stuff. Overall, it's nice. The, the thing I don't really like is it doesn't save the configuration down into the controller. So that makes it really hard when it's a standalone system. But I don't do a lot of standalone. I'm sure you don't do a lot of standalone, so you can get over it. Prices are really good. Um, the controller, just like every other controller, has a, has a few quirks. Um, but everything overall is pretty good. You can uh, run the debug program in here that will do the live values for you. So you can get into the programming and make any kind of changes you want. So that's kind of a broad overview of the DizTech controller and how to download it and what it looks like. Thanks for watching.